Although I'm not really able so much to eat in the conventional sense, food is still something of an interest of mine. Cooking especially has piqued my curiosity, and I have dedicated a great number of hours to the hypothetical perfection of several recipes. This passion, most likely, is due to the fact that, as much as certain people refuse to acknowledge it to be true, cooking is a science. Ingredient proportions, flavour combinations, temperatures and cooking techniques all play a vital role in the delivery of the final product. One of the most widely used chemical reactions in all forms of cooking is the Maillard reaction. It's this chemical phenomenon that gives foods that have been browned, such as steaks, breads, dumplings, fries, and so many more, their incredible flavours. Although it was used in cooking for centuries before it was officially studied, the first paper establishing the chemical reactions that form the Maillard reaction was published only in 1953 by John E. Hodge, although it was named for its accidental discoverer, Louis Camille Maillard, a French chemist whose 1912 experiments into the reproduction of biological protein synthesis led to the discovery. The science behind the reaction is somewhat complex, although in basic terms it's a chemical reaction involving an amino acid and a reducing sugar, normally requiring heat. The type of amino acid that is present in the reaction is actually quite important, as it is this factor that determines the flavour that will be produced by the process. The Maillard reaction creates hundreds of different flavour compounds, which then break down to form even more flavour compounds, and so on, as the reaction continues over time. Because different types of foods contain different amino acids, the same chemical reaction will produce different aromas and tastes in roasted coffee than it will in malted barley, both of which are created thanks to the Maillard reaction. In fact, so varied are the flavours that can be created by the Maillard reaction that there is even an entire profession, known as flavorists, who are employed by food and beverage companies to create new and distinctive flavours by combining their scientific knowledge of the chemical palette with what can only be described as artistic creativity. In fact, virtually every flavour you've ever eaten in a processed foodstuff from bubble tea to Dorito dust, has been thanks to a flavourist. Although a high temperature is usually required to stimulate the Maillard reaction, the necessary heat required to successfully pull off a Maillard browning is inversely proportional to the pH of the food being cooked. That means that the higher you can make the pH, the more basic you can make the foodstuff the lower the temperature required for the Maillard reaction to do its thing. This, interestingly, is why baking soda is such a commonly used ingredient in cooking. Searing a steak is possibly the best known example of the Maillard reaction, and although I've already mentioned steak once in this video, I think it's important to state that searing a steak does not seal in the juices. On the contrary, it dehydrates the meat more than cooking it without searing. What it does do, however, is it creates a well-browned crust on the food, which creates an interesting textural experience on the palate, and, thanks to the Maillard reaction, ensures beautifully rich flavours. Although caramelisation also has its part to play in the crust forming on seared steak, it should be noted that this is an entirely different process, involving the pyrolysis of sugars. The Maillard reaction is vital to the majority of foods that are eaten and enjoyed in societies around the world, and without it we couldn't enjoy toast, pretzels, baked goods, or even maple syrup. But I think it's interesting to note that it is also a process that occurs within the human body, as a step in the formation of advanced glycation end products, and links have been found between the process and ocular degeneration, diabetes, pulmonary fibrosis, and neurodegeneration. While this seems rather scary, and I can show you it is rather scary, 
It's simply a process that occurs as you age, building up over time. At least you aren't a steak. Then you'd be browned within seconds. Hey everybody, thank you for making it to the end of another one of my videos. I personally could not be happier with how that went, and I'm pretty sure that you agree. If I'm right, you should click the like button, which is just down here. And you should also click the share button, it can be found down there too. And there's one up here somewhere maybe? Anyway, if you would like to watch last week's video on a topic completely different to this one, you should click in the area that is over here. If you want to subscribe to my channel and be notified whenever I post anything, you should click over here. Anyway guys, I will see you next week.